Okay, today we're going to be learning about classical conditioning. Um, so what it means is that an organism comes to associate two stimuli together. So lightning and thunder, for example. So we see the lightning, we kind of anticipate the boom that's going to come, or the thunder, or even the other way around. Um, the tone and the food, in the case of the dogs. So it, it starts with something that happens naturally. So like salivation naturally happens because of food in our mouths. Well what happens is a neutral stimulus, neutral just means it doesn't mean anything. It's paired with a stimulus that evokes the response or the reflex. The neutral stimulus eventually comes to evoke the reflex all on its own. So we're going to watch an example. This is using my trusty subject, Justin, my husband, um, of classical conditioning in action and see if you can figure out what the neutral stimulus is and what the response is. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to say a bunch of words, and when I say a particular word, I'm going to spray Justin in the face with this bottle of water. Are you ready, Justin? Let's do okay, it. Okay, so be looking for the association that Justin learns, and let's see his reaction. Okay, so here we go. Can, shoe, box, ball. <laughs> um, light, oh, light, clock, ball, <laughs> Cooper, <laughs> ball, <laughs> toys, rug, carpet, chair, ball, sock, airplane, outside, doorknob, ball, pet, dog, ball, can, cereal, house, ball. Okay. So, Justin here has learned an association. Which word did you associate with the spray bottle? Ball. All right, wasn't that great? Um, let's take a look at some of the terms we need to know and apply it to that situation. So, first of all, you have the neutral stimulus, and this is what does not naturally produce any type of response. And so in the case of Pavlov's experiment, the neutral stimulus, it was the bell. Well, in our little experiment with Justin there, what was the neutral stimulus? Naturally, me saying the word ball shouldn't elicit a response at all from Justin. Um, but over time, it starts to. And so the unconditioned stimulus, so unconditioned, so that means you don't have to teach it or train it. Um, so this is the stimulus that unconditionally and automatically, naturally, triggers a response, or the natural response to that. And so un the UCS, in this case, is getting sprayed in the face. If you get sprayed in the face, what's your natural response? You're going to flinch. And so the unconditioned response, or the UCR, is the unlearned, naturally occurring, automatic response to the unconditioned stimulus. And so this is the flinch. Oh, water in my face, I'm going to flinch. Okay, well, over time, when the neutral stimulus becomes paired with the unconditioned stimulus, and so now the, all of a sudden ball happens, every time you get sprayed in the face, you've become conditioned, um, and this uh, previously neutral stimulus that after association with an unconditioned stimulus comes to trigger a conditioned response. And so the conditioned stimulus is ball. And so know that this is an easy little formula. The neutral stimulus is always the same thing as the conditioned stimulus. And the unconditioned response always turns into the conditioned response. So the conditioned response is the reaction to that and um, that in this case is the flinch. Okay, so Justin did a great job there. Uh, let's apply some more of the vocabulary to this situation. So acquisition is the term we use to apply to when that connection is being made. And so that's when he, I first started to pair ball with being sprayed in the face. So that's the acquisi acquisition stage. And extinction occurs when the conditioned response stops happening. And so we say it becomes extinct. Um, so when the unconditioned stimulus doesn't come anymore after the conditioned stimulus. So for example, I stop spraying them in the face when the water comes. So let's see what happens. It's there. So outside, ball, ran, swim, play, ocean, ball, face, carpet, dog, cooper, kitchen, ball, sock, Ball, lamp, ball, picture, ball. 
Okay. Well, uh, technically, because I was no longer making this association, um, he's starting to overcome this association, so it's becoming what we call extinct. And so now, if I see Justin walking through our kitchen later and I say, hey, ball, he's probably not going to flinch in fear because he's losing that association. So, um, some other terms we need to know in relation to this is spontaneous recovery. And this is when the reappearance after a rest period of a previously extinct or extinguished condition response. And so in this example, if Justin, all of a sudden I did see him and I said, ball, and he went, oh, flinch. Um, that's because this behavior, we say it's truly never permanently forgotten, that there might be somewhere deep down that you remember that experience. Um, and so the spontaneous recovery is when you have that association again. Generalization occurs um, if there's something similar, so we generalize to another similar stimulus to have a similar response. So in this case, the word ball is kind of close to the word mm, bike. And so if I said the word bike, and Justin flinched because it was close, he kind of maybe misheard me or he thought it was similar and that caused him to flinch, then that would be the concept of generalization. Discrimination is the opposite of that. That's when he's able to discriminate and say, oh, you said ball, not bike, so you said bike, not ball, so I'm not going to react to that. And so this is something that happens naturally so that we dis differentiate between the two. A good example of discrimination for me um, is when I was little, I got really sick one time when I ate lasagna. Ugh, it was just terrible and I was throwing up and I was like five years old. And so I developed an aversion to lasagna because the neutral stimulus is lasagna, but getting sick causes nausea or gross feelings, so that happens naturally. And so I became conditioned, so now lasagna, the conditioned stimulus, um, led to the conditioned response, which was yuck, nausea kind of feelings. Well, I was able to discriminate, though, between other similar foods. So like spaghetti didn't make me nauseous. It was technically the same thing. Tortellini, that was fine. But lasagna, no way.